Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review. Now again today we're going to be continuing with the Belgian beer series because there's a lot of beer we're going to get through. So it's going to be one of these kind of underlying ones. We'll be doing lots of other different series as well that will come and go. But this will be a kind of a one that's kind of for the long haul this year. And uh, today we're going to be doing a beer from Du Bureau And it's a Cubi Tetron. This is a nice little beer, a bit of an unusual beer as well, which we'll be going into that. And we got this from Lidl. I think it was working out. Was it working out? I've actually got the receipts this time. Belgian Pilsen. It's. Uh, I don't know why they're calling this uh, a pale ale. It's actually more a kind of, well, it's, it can be described, some people describe it as a blonde, some people describe it as a, you know, a blonde beer, some people class it as a, a lager. It's, uh, it's got re-fermentation on it, so there's always a bit of yeast in it. It's 7%, it's 330ml, it's uh, 5.99 for a four pack of it. It is more kind of like, well, I suppose it is a cross between a kind of blonde beer and a pale ale. It's just something a bit different about it because one of the major things it's kind of used for brewing, it isn't really a kind of normal process. It's one of the main ingredients in must or mustum in, uh, in Latin. And mustum in Latin means young wine. And this is basically what it is. It's actually made, must is basically the kind of uh, the crushing of the grapes before they're strained or at last. So it's got everything in it. It's got all the seeds, it's got the skins, it's got the pulp of the fruit, it's got the juice, and that's what must is. And this is basically brewed with must, which gives that kind of fruitiness. And then of course it's hopped. So it is, and they also, I think they put dry orange peel in it as well as part of it. So when they're doing the hopping, they're also putting in dried orange peel. So, and then of course it's re-fermented as well. And that's why there's yeast and things like that in it. So it's quite a high one. It's quite a, a complicated process, but it also has some unusual ingredients as well. So let's crack it open and see what it's like. So that's another reason why we're doing the, the Belgian beer. Oh, fucking balls. Right, um, that's pissed everywhere. Bollocks. Seriously. Well, that's another reason why we're doing Belgian beer because it's unbloody predictable. Right, hold on. Let's get it. Pissed everywhere. Fucking hell. Right, we're bloody everywhere. Look at it, it's got the bloody top hat on it now. Shut up, piss. Anyway, that's the problem with doing beer reviews. Sometimes. Oh, it takes a call of the table. Anyway, so I'm absolutely covered in that. I could be raking the booze. So, yes, um, that's one of the reasons why we do the Belgian beers. It's obviously not just to spill it and piss it everywhere, but it's because of some of the different processes you use, some of the different ingredients you use. But they do make a difference. And again, oh, this started off as a microbrewery beer. I think it was in 2000 and really kind of started to take off um, first of all within the student sector of the kind of local area and then over the next three or four years it was uh, pushed on to be throughout kind of Belgium you know and Brussels and things like that so moved on to the kind of more wider areas and I think eventually geez, doing well this oh for God's sake go down for goodness sake Jesus, you want a flake of that, sir? Jesus. Look at it. Just sheer bloody foam pissing out of this bottle now. Sure as shit. So, yeah. And, of course, it's usually recommended, because of the flavour profiles of this beer, it's usually recommended to kind of drink it very, very cold. So, like a normal kind of Belgian beer would probably be around about 5 or 6 degrees centigrade. This is usually kind of recommended down to kind of four or three. And as you can see, it's quite fermented. You can see that it's uh, 
there's quite a lot of carbonation going on there and of course it's quite cloudy as well now what am I getting I'm getting fruit but I'm getting fruit acidity and that's what I'm getting so I'm getting salsas here kind of chopped tomatoes I'm getting some grain but not so much grain I'm getting a little bit of malt and I'm getting an acidity I'm getting this kind of dryness coming from it but yeah I'm also getting a little bit of hops as well but the predominant thing is kind of acidic and that's what I'm kind of getting and I actually even feel it on my nose it's a little bit of acidity as I'm kind of breathing in the aroma through the nose so yeah so let's see what it tastes like oh yeah so yeah there's a lightness to it that is different from other blondes and I can understand why people maybe would call it a pale ale rather than a blonde even though they refer to themselves as a blonde beer but a blonde beer can also translate to be a bit of a pale ale to a certain degree if you want to see that it's probably closer to a pale ale than it would be to a, a lager from that point of view because this is also I think the brain temperature is roughly about 23 degrees on this beer so definitely not a lager um, at that point mm. but yeah it's quite a nice mouthfeel to it but it's light very light Right, let's break it down to see what you're getting. You're starting off with some very light kind of grey. Uh, slight sweetness again from the malt, but it's very, very light, very accented indeed at the start. Uh, but you're getting kind of grain and to a little light kind of light kind of fruitiness, which is then moving on to being and mid tongue. You're getting that kind of acidity, you're getting that kind of slightly chopped tomato -y kind of sensation on the tongue and the mid tongue. So you're getting that. So you're, you're, you're kind of feeling the presence of the acidity. So you are. And uh, you've still got a little bit of grain there, you've still got the accents of sweetness. You also get a kind of slight lightness of fruit. I mean, uh, how would you kind of describe it? It's almost like summer fruit, it's just ever so slight. It's not not berries, it's just like you know sometimes when you you can smell like strawberries or raspberries. You're not tasting them, but you can uh, you, you just know what they're going to taste like just by the smell. Well, it's like that. It's almost like a kind of an aroma in the mouth that your your mouth is kind of picking up and giving you a slight kind of. Uh, accents of, of light summer fruits but it's really you have to kind of search for it and then what you're getting in the aftertaste is with that kind of acidity kind of coming through to give you that kind of real dry finish and it is quite a dry finish and it's backed up by the kind of alcohol vapors because it's seven percent beer. You're just getting ever so slight alcohol vapors as well on the back, just as you're swallowing the kind of alcohol vapors that are left at the back of the, the mouth after you swallow the liquid. So you're just getting that. So you've got that little kind of accents of the aftertaste, just of the acidity of the aftertaste. Excuse me, and uh, it's backed up by this kind of a vapor of the alcohol. It's not overly strong um, vapors and things like that, but you just, just get a little bit of uh, presence of everything that's there after you swallow the liquid. In general, it's actually quite nice. It's quite well carbonated. I don't notice it because it causes slight frothing at the back of the mouth. So yes, it's a bit kind of uh, too much. It's not too much. It's not kind of nipping the tongue at the front. But it is giving that slight kind of foaminess or kind of uh, um, 
frothiness just at the back of the mouth, just that, just don't just be about to swallow really. So yeah, it, it's a it's a nice beer, and uh, it's it's very light. It's a uh, it's very subtle and very light indeed, and uh, it's actually quite easy to drink. The problem is, of course, is it's a seven percent, so you've got to be careful. But it's quite light and quite easy to drink. So what would I give this out of ten? I'm going to give this a 7. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. It's, it's, it's a different kind of brown beer in its own right. And uh, I think it's kind of bordering, kind of blonde, kind of slightly ale-ish like from that point of view. But what it does do, it does have that kind of acidity. And just a light kind of hint of fruitiness. I think I'm also just giving it a slightly getting light citrus, ever so slight light citrus but yeah i would give it seven out of ten it's very nice i would recommend it if you do have a chance to to try it then do so i, th I think you would enjoy it and it's also something nice to try anyway and it's something a bit different so yeah seven out of ten seven percent alcohol 330 ml bottle 5.99 for a four pack out of a thanks for watching cheers and bye for now